We want to welcome all of his glory nation from east to west to north to south as we bring you a special week in review of Bible prophecy. There's been a big explosion going through uh, the world uh, right before our very eyes, many divisions as, to, uh, as well. The Lord gave me a prophetic word uh, several times over the years. He said, explosions are coming, explosions are coming. And those explosions are a dual prophecy. The prophecy that literal explosions will be coming as a judgment upon the nations in the latter days, which we're in. And there's an, going to be an explosion of his Holy Spirit. And before that takes off, we were talking about this in one of our other studies this week. It's like a NASA spaceship. Before you get to the old Cape Canaveral, before the spaceship was launched, you would get the 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and then launch. And, then, and you could see the spaceship launching or getting ready to launch. It's just shaking and shaking and shaking with the, all the power of that particular vessel about ready to blast off. And that's so the second part of it is a blast off of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, the last outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And uh, that's upon us. But in this time of explosions, there will be many physical explosions around the world. So the Lord gave that to me again this morning. So there's many explosions coming. And then I was happened to be reading, as I do, something going on in Israel. And the article was about explosions. Then I went to another article about the, uh, the, uh, the president of Venezuela that was almost assassinated yesterday with a drone explosion. Um, uh, Maduro was almost killed by an explosion. And we have much division going on in the world, all these countries. Uh, so the explosions are literally, and he said that is going to happen to the nations as we speak. There's going to be great, great uh, uh, explosions. And there's going to be great divisions. We're seeing divisions like no other time in history. And Jesus told us that in the, in the latter days there will be divisions because of my namesake. You know, three against two, families divided, worlds divided, nations divided. We're seeing it in every nation under the sun, whether it's Venezuela or whether it's Iran, where the people are uh, protesting against the Ayatollah and the, the horrible government. You see that happening in China. Uh, I think Tr President Trump is more popular in China than Xi uh, because there's an uprising that I read over the weekend about China and they call him, uh, with respect, uh, Grandpa. And they believe and they, they hope that he will overcome Xi so that they won't be as oppressed. This is the people of China. So you're seeing every nation literally being divided and obviously the United States, before we get into the United States, because that's the bulk of what we want to talk about today, the division within the United States, is um, Israel's being divided. Everybody looks at, you know, we talk about biblical Israel all the time. I'll bless those who bless you and I'll curse those who curse you. When we say that, or when anybody says that, we're talking about biblical precepts and commandments by the Lord Most High, Jehovah of hosts. What he says, not what a secular government says, not what the, you know, the, the Knesset at, in uh, Israel votes into law or what the people are doing. No, it's biblical. Remember, even in the days of ancient Israel and ancient Judah, they rebelled against the Lord. And it, wasn't, it was for their secular ways. And we're seeing that happen in Israel as well. We're seeing great protests and divisions in Israel and Tel Aviv and a gay march in, of all places, the, the holy city of Jerusalem, which is against, obviously, three different world religions. This has a fundamental that, that's not against their, their, uh, the precepts, the precepts of Judaism the precepts of the Quran and the precepts of, of uh, Christianity, uh, the Old Testament and the New Testament. So we're seeing many, many divisions in the world. And uh, it's happening to families. It's happening to nations. It's happening to left versus right. We're seeing it more versus left versus right. And it is viral. It is, it is, it is vicious. We see family members getting in fisticuffs, swearing at each other. Uh, saying they're not going to talk to each other ever again. And it, it all comes down to uh, it, it, in faith. And they're talking about faith in how it does with politics. And uh, the center of this happens to be Donald Trump. So let me get something straight before we talk about Donald Trump. We're not pro or against Donald Trump. Okay, Donald Trump is who he is. Remember, we, we, we had a message uh, last week that said Donald Trump, in my, from my conjecture, is a modern day Cyrus, a modern day Jehu, and a modern day uh, 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 Nebuchadnezzar. So those were all three 
uh, that were not of the, the tribe of Judah, so to speak, or from Christian. God is using, whether you like Donald Trump or not, he's using Donald Trump to shake the core of America. And I can see what he's doing. Now, I don't agree with what he's doing. That's not something that I would personally do. But God is doing it for a purpose, and he's doing it for a purpose, and it's truly shaking the world and shaking the United States to its core. The United States is starting to get blessed, uh, and, and that's, the sad thing is we're seeing the, econ or the, the economy is doing well. 70% of Americans believe that the economy is going to the right path. Whether you like it or not, we're on the right track to at least negotiate with North Korea. We've taken a hard stance against Iran. We're doing the right things as far as tariffs from a world perspective on China. China looks like they're going to have to blink because their economy is not going to take it. But the world still wants to fight about Russia, 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 Russia. And again, Russia is no, they're no uh, friend of ours. Make no mistake about that. But out of the, the, the enemies of the United States, Russia is probably at least the fourth. China is our number one enemy. What well, people don't realize is China is our number one enemy, enemy because they can, they can hurt us economically where Russia cannot hurt us economically. China is, uh, is, is, is a, what we call a bad oil. You can't trust China. They're stealing intellectual uh, properties. They are corrupt. They are, their money is their God. They're hacking us more than Russia's hacking us. And I'm not saying one hack is better than the other hack, but we have to put where, we have to put our priorities. China is our biggest threat. Iran is a threat. North Korea is still a threat until we get the nuclear uh, arsenal out of there. And Russia, yes, is a threat. And uh, Putin is an ex-KGB agent, so we should never, ever trust him. However, one thing I will give Russia credit for, whatever, whatever the reason, at least Russia is putting God back into the government and Russia is putting God back in the school, the God of Christianity. So that's a step better than the United States. So let's get to Trump. Again, Trump is a bull in a China shop. He's doing something that, again, we uh, should not do. He's testing people's mind. He's testing te te people's intellect. Because when he, when he tests people's mind, it's going to the condition of their heart. And I believe God is using Donald Trump to, to really shake things up to see what will come out of their mouth. Remember what Jesus said? It's not what comes into the mouth that is uh, unclean. It's what comes out of the mouth that's unclean because that's the condition of one's heart. He's stirring up so much stuff and people are saying, why does he continue to tweet these, these nasty things and say this person's not very smart and this person and pick fights everywhere? I don't, know the, the, I don't know what goes through his mind, but I believe it is a test from the Most High God. And it goes back to the days of when I, I played sports and, and goes back to the days that I was a Marine. In sports, in the old days, we used to call it, it used to be called trash talking. One of the things that you would try to do in a, in a sporting event is try to take a mental, a mental edge over your opponent. Men, mental, the mental part of sports is probably just as important, if not more important, than the physical aspect of, of playing a sport, especially golf or, or golf, like, or, or especially high skills. It's, it's your mind. Can you, can you get into the mind of your opponent? Can you get them to get off track? so that they're more vulnerable. So we used to do that in the, you know, in basketball and football and in baseball when I was growing up that was that was, you you would call trash talking to get your mind of your player so that you would have a competitive advantage. I believe Donald Trump is trying to do that to a certain extent and I think he's trying to shape shake things to his direction for whatever purpose. But one thing God is using is again, we are not pro Trump. Either way, we are pro God. God is using this man, Donald Trump, to steer, uh, to, to get the people to get the vile out of him. He's causing everyone to spew back, whether it's on Twitter, whether it's on fake news, to spew, spew back more hatred and the hatred upon hatred and upon hatred. So what he's trying to do to get to somebody's mind, which is working, is also getting to the condition of somebody's heart by spewing this, this, this vileness. Do you have a problem with Donald Trump? The worst thing you can do if you're a Christian and you love the Lord Jesus Christ, don't spew that vial back because that vial is coming from a condition of your heart. He's playing with your mind, whether you're for him or against it. It's a mind game. When I was in the Marines, we um, I've told this story a couple times, but not how, how bad it was. We, were, uh, we, we guarded the seventh fleet of the communication station in uh, the Persian Gulf. So when I was there, we were security guards. So we were the security, military police, if you will, for uh, the 7th Fleet Communications Station. And that was during the first Persian Gulf crisis with Iran. We were on high alert. We thought we were going to go to war with Iran. So it was high tension. These were naval bases that we were guarding. 
And they, again, that's why there was a seventh fleet. And there was probably only 50 total Marines on a base of tens and twenties of thirtieths or thousands of Navy guys and, and women. It was always common for the Navy people because they always, there was always this, 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 uh, it used to be in good fun, but now it got out of control. Uh, and I don't know if it is out of control to this day, but there's always this v venom between the Navy and the, the Marines, uh, this, this fighting on who's better and how many Marines can we knock off? Can we get in the head of a Marine? So we were taught when we were on post to, no matter what somebody was trying to do to try to get into your mind, to get you to react and do something stupid that will get you in trouble and overreact against your lawful lo law, to be really mindful, literally, of what they were trying to do. So when in the Navy, you would have Navy people, especially when they drink. When they drink, oh my gosh, the same as Twitter. When you drink, the intelligence, reasoning, and judgment go out the window. So if we get the Navy guys coming or the Navy women coming back from base and they've had too much to drink, they'll spit at the Marines, they'll call the Marines everything under the sun, and they're just trying to get into our mind to get us to do something stupid. And I believe that's exactly what the Spirit of God is, is, is allowing to happen in the world today. He's testing the mind. Will you react to somebody else's bad reaction? We don't want to fight bad reaction with bad reaction because that's a condition of the heart. The world's going to fight each other no matter what. But we're talking about if you're of Christ. If you're of Christ and you, you can't spew this hatred and this division back, don't fall into the game. Remember so many times my coaches and my in, in my commanders when I was in the Marines, don't let them get in your head. How many times have you ever heard a coach say that? Don't let them get into your head. Because if you get into your head, you're, 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 you're all out of whack. You've, you've lost the game, so to speak. And we're talking about something more important. We're talking about the loss of eternal life. So it's a condition of our heart. Our mind can control what, what comes out of our heart. And we have to check ourselves. And we have to check ourselves, is that from God? Is that the Christian walk that I want to walk? Or am I falling into the vileness of the, the, the spirit of Jezebel? There is no question. We're under the greatest spiritual attack today in every nation, but especially the United States of America, because Satan knows two key things. He knows, one, that his time is short, and the coming of the Lord is very soon. The second thing he knows is God has a plan for a great revival a great last harvest, and he's trying to create the spirit of Jezebel. This goes for pastors, this goes for Christians, because none of us is above it. I'm not coming out here and telling you, do what I say and say what I do, because I, am a, I would be a hypocrite. I am a work in progress. I am of sin nature as well. I caught myself in that yesterday, not on Twitter, not fighting over political things, but yesterday, Saturdays are usually the Shabbat, um, and I don't really take the Shabbat. I'm part Jewish, but I don't take the Shabbat. Uh, I don't follow the law of the Shabbat. But Saturday happens to be the day that uh, I was coaching basketball. It's the last of our coaching of my son's basketball team. It's the day of the week that I'm at least in the Bible, and I'm the most vulnerable. And I had an attack uh, yesterday that was worse than any attack I've, I've had in a long time. And I had to check myself into the Holy Spirit before I went to bed last night because I had this just, just, just feeling of just attack. It's just viral attack. And, you know, I'd be short with my sons for no reason. I, I would get, uh, get upset with them. And I'd have to check myself back and say, well, what are you doing? Come on. If you, if you talk the talk, you got to walk the walk. Don't be a hypocrite. So I had to put myself in time out last night to say, hey, Take a breath. Take a breath. Satan is trying to use the spirit of Jezebel to get you off course. You got to come to me, son. And he always does that when I'm the, the day of the week that I'm not in the scripture. Satan knows when to attack. He knows how to attack. He knows when to attack. And he attacks hard like a, a ferocious lion. And he attacked me with everything he had yesterday. And I finally had to get on my knees and say, Lord, man, I'm sorry. I let you down. Why would I get so wrapped up and get so frustrated and, and take it out of my, 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 my sons, even though they probably deserved it, but I shouldn't get that viral. I shouldn't get that upset. But in the world, it's worse. Why are we getting so upset with a, a, a sister or a brother or, or, or somebody that we don't know? We're called to love, whether they're Republican or Democrat, whatever Donald Trump says, who cares what he says? Why do we have to fight back? Donald Trump says something, LeBron says something. Both of them say they're dumb people. Who are you to believe? Well, you don't believe either one of them because we're, not, we're called not to get into that type of thing. 
We have to stand back and know who the most important person in our life is. And there's no question in my, the, the purpose of this is we're in the end times. And Satan is trying to distract us and he's trying to get us into vile and he's using social media, the airways. Remember, Satan is the king of the airways. He is control of the internet. He is the, the king of the Twitter. He's the king of the Facebook. He's the king of the viral. He's messing with our intelligence, reasoning and judgment because we don't have our protection up. And I'm a great example. Yesterday, coaching basketball, then taking my sons to get their, their you know, do a shopping a trip to get their school clothes for the, for the year. I wasn't protected. I didn't use, I didn't have the word with me. And shame on me. I can't even go a whole day. I can't even go six or seven hours without protection because Satan tried to sift me and sift me good. And luckily the Holy Spirit was there to catch me to say, hey, my son, you relax, relax. It's not that bad. Relax. Don't get all upset. We're called to we're called to love the Lord. Don't get upset. So this is a message to, to everybody. First of all, that all of us are fallen. I don't care who you are. I don't care what you've said you've done. I don't care how, how much you love the Lord. We are still all work in progress. If anybody's sitting in front of you or a church or a building or anywhere saying that, watch me and follow everything I do and everything will be okay with you because I'm perfect, you better run because we're not all perfect and we're all vulnerable. We're all vulnerable to sin nature. And if we let our guard down just for five or six hours, that's it. That's all I did. He will attack like a roaring lion and he attacked and he attacked and he attacked. And he knew the vulnerable areas of me personally where to attack and how to attack. And I fell into his trap because I got, I got, I got upset. And you know, I didn't get completely upset or you know, throw things or you know, whip anybody or anything like that. No, nobody was hurt, nobody was hit. No, I mean, it was the tongue. And the tongue is one of the most serious things we can do. We were taught when we were kids, sticks and stones may break our bones, but words will never hurt me. Well, that's not true. Words can devour people. And our words are so important. That's why Jesus said it's not what goes into the mouth that's important or clean or unclean. It's what comes out of the mouth because whatever comes out of your mouth can damage somebody, can hurt somebody, even when you're not meant to do that. So the Lord is testing us today and Satan is, is coming after us like the roaring lion. What will we do with this world about ready to explode, with division upon division, left versus right, color, race, everything coming against each other. And if we're called through the name of the Most High God through Jesus Christ, that we say, wait a minute, I don't care if you're left, I don't care if you're right, I don't care what, you, what, what you're protesting, I'm not, gonna go, I'm not gonna step to that level. I'm not gonna get vile. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a deep breath and, and pray in the Spirit. I'm gonna take a deep breath and get into the Word. I'm gonna take a deep breath and get into my moral compass, which is the Word of God. And I'm not gonna let this thing get away from me. This, way, this thing has to go with me. 24 7 to keep my armor on to keep my protection because everybody's vulnerable in these these end days so if you're finding yourself and you're called a christian that you're into this vileness of, of, of left versus right whether it's on social media whether it's within the family whether it's in division or there's fighting of any sort whatsoever satan is trying to, to to trick you in these end days he's trying to deceive you and he can deceive anybody and he can trick anybody and nobody has the perfect weapon to stop him. The only perfect weapon is the word of God. And if we're not wearing those five elements of defense every day, as Paul says, I mean, every minute of every day, because you can drop it down for five hours like I did yesterday and have the spirit of Jezebel attacking you until you start sn getting snippety all the time. And I don't want to live my life being snippety. I want to live my life with the love of Christ. And we need to look at ourselves in the mirror too. Are we falling into this category? Are we being honest with ourselves? Do we love Christ with all our heart, our soul, and our mind? Are we called to be monarchs, not left or right, or whatever the argument is? It's very simple. This is the truth, and this is the only truth. Satan is trying to spread faults, trying to spread the wicked, trying to spell division. He is the father of division. That's what Jesus said. If Satan's against him, says himself, his house will, 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 will fall. Well, we know he's against himself because he's trying to destroy all his house does fall. The question is, will you allow Satan's house to fall upon you for eternal life because you got into the vileness of the world? Who cares what the left says? Who cares what the right says? 
It doesn't matter what man says. It only matters what God says. And it only matters what God thinks through his son, Jesus Christ. So this message through the Bible this week, we see Bible prophecy being fulfilled before our very eyes. We have the prophecy that was given to me about the explosions that are on the horizon, literal explosions. with a 7.8 .8 earthquake this morning in Indonesia. I mean, we're talking about explosions are on the doorstep. Good explosions and bad explosions will be coming simultaneously. The question is, which one are you going to be of? Are you going to be of the world with the explosions of judgment coming upon? Or are you going to be separated, set apart? You notice when Jesus said we're set apart from the world? Set apart, if you're set apart, that means you're not in the division. So if you're set away from the people that are divided, that's a good thing because you're set apart. You can't get into the division of the left and the right. You can't get into the hatred. You can't get into he said, she said. Well, LeBron says he's a bad guy. And Trump says he's a bad guy. Well, guess what? That's neither one of them is, is of God. And I believe God is using this for a purpose. I'm not saying Donald Trump is, is, is the, the, the next pope or the next great Billy Graham, but by no means. I believe God is using Donald Trump for a purpose. And God uses Gentile kings and pagan kings for his purpose and his glory and presidents. I don't know if he's saved or not. I pray he ends up to be a Nebuchadnezzar as he finished, but he's, he is definitely a J.U. and a combination of Cyrus because he's doing what was right for Jerusalem. He took, bought, brought the capital back to the, the, ever, the eternal capital of Israel. That's a Cyrus, that's a Cyrus, that's a sign of a Cyrus. J.U. is what he's doing right now. J.U. rode ragged and he broke up everything. He was a bull in the china shop, J.U. And that's exactly what Donald Trump's doing. And he's got the force of a Nebuchadnezzar. We pray for his soul that he turns to the end of Nebuchadnezzar of Daniel 4, that he recognizes the God of Daniel. But God will use these people to shake up in these end days. And there's no question. People say, well, why does he keep continue to tweet? We don't know what mentally reason why, but it's obviously from a spiritual reason why. God wants to call out the division. He wants it, and Satan wants to call out the division. They're calling the cards out. Okay, so if you speech hate, are you gonna hate back? And then how far does the hate continue to go? Then you're outside of your mind, and that's a condition of your heart. So he's extending you past where you're supposed to be in the on guard position against Satan. It doesn't, once you start reaching past that point, you're vulnerable. You're vulnerable because your heart is, 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 doesn't have the breastplate over it. And you don't have the word of God as the offensive weapon. And you don't have the Holy Spirit as the, as the prayer, as the intercessor prayer, praying in the spirit, the carpet bombing of the enemy. So this today, we have to ask ourselves, are we being divided? Yes. Are we going to fall into this vileness and fight back? And get into and let people get into our minds because of vileness and fight back with vileness, or are we going to protect our heart and put Jesus Christ as the compass of our heart? That's where he is. This is the end day test. This is the end day explosion. This is the end day division that Paul talked about. Jesus talked about. We are here, and it's heating up, heating up. That there is no middle ground. Remember, we've talked this many, many times that we are in the the church age of Laodicea. And it's no coincidence that we're in the, the seventh of the last, in the last church age. Laodicea, you're neither hot nor cold. You're lukewarm. You're divided. You're not hot or cold. I'd rather you I'll vomit you out of my mouth. He wants us to be either all in or all out. You can't have one foot in the world and one foot with Christ. You can't have one foot with Christ and one foot into vileness and politics because you're a hypocrite. If you're not following the precepts and commandments of the Most High God, and he doesn't have this as a tablet of your heart, then you're doing it wrong. I don't care if you're a Republican. I don't care if you're a Democrat. We have to check our voice because the words that come out of our mouth and the things that we type on Twitter or the things we type on Facebook or any other social media, is it of love or is it of division? Is it of Christ or is it of hate? Is it taking the, the animosity and the hatred to a new level? Are we going to try to see how far we can fight back? Oh, that person, they have no idea how good I can tweet back. They tweeted to me that I'm dumb. Okay, I'm going to show you you're dumber. Well, that is dumb and dumber because dumb and dumber are playing the game back and forth just like the movie. We don't want to be dumb and dumber. We want to have more love. Love is the key. Love is the answer. Love is the only thing that is truth. And the love of Christ is the only thing that you can be set free in this world of division and this world that we're coming into truly explosions. 
So this day we ask, are you for the Lord or are you of the world? That's the question you have to ask yourself. We've come through the end of a week. We do these things on a weekly basis. We see the world coming to the end days, as the prophet said to the, to the letter, to the T, the Ezekiel behind the scenes, Ezekiel 38 and 39, and the first, uh, first time in history is, is ready, uh, but the, the Psalm 83 war is imminent. I read today that Hamas, and, uh, which is a terrorist organization in Israel, are trying to negotiate a treaty, uh, a ceasefire. How do, you, how do you negotiate a ceasefire, a treaty? When with an, a terrorist organization that's sworn to the destruction of your existence, who doesn't even want to acknowledge that you exist. It's hard to have a, a, a ceasefire and it's hard to have a treaty when, when somebody has that much hatred. Again, that's pure hate. That's of the evil one. The Bible never tells us to hate. The Bible tells us the opposite. The Bible says, love your neighbor. That means if you're a Republican, love the Democrat. Take the other cheek, as Jesus says. If they say something that's offensive, pray for them in, in private and, 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 and turn the other cheek. And vice versa. If you're a Democrat, love your Republican. Love each other as Americans first, but God is above all. Because we have a king. We are a monarch. Our king of kings and lord of hosts is coming home soon. Coming home real soon. And he's going to sit on his throne of his glory. And that glory will be the world government. That will be every nation under the sun. And he will be righteous. And he will be, a, he will be not Republican or Democrat. And everything he does will be truth. And will be perfect. And his scales of justice will be perfect. Wouldn't that be a wonderful day? Because the scales of justice are not perfect today. Whether you're left or right, they're not perfect. And there's always an ideology of power, greed, money behind all the things that these politicians are doing. So why are we getting into the vileness of this? The American people, I truly believe, are starting to get it. And that's why we're going to have a great, great revival of the United States. There are more people today, I believe, that are starting to step back and say, this is not of God. This is not of Christ. I'm not going to participate in this. And that 20 to 30 percent that are really, really vile and divisive is making it look a lot worse. I believe God is going to turn back to the heart of America. We're going to see a restoration. We're going to see an explosion of his glory. We're going to see an explosion of the Holy Spirit. And we're going to be seeing an explosion of the last great harvest. Is your heart ready? Is your heart ready to go? Are you giving up and watching that tongue? Are you have the Bible by your side? You got the five elements of defense? Are you checking yourself every day and say, Lord, what am I doing today that I need to correct? What do I need to do so I'm not as vile that I'm not fitting into the world? but I'm being set apart for your purpose and your glory. That's all that matters. At the end of the day, when we go home to be with the Lord, it's what you do for him, not whether you're Republican or Democrat. You're not going to get up to the beam of seat and say, oh, by the way, are you, were you a Republican or were you a Democrat? Were you, were you for this particular bill or against that particular bill? It's not even going to come up. He could care less if you're Republican or Democrat. He wants to know who's your king. Is he your Lord? Is he your Kairos? Is he your truth? Did you put all your trust, faith in him and only him? Or did you do it through the knuckleheads of the world? Did you get into the vileness of the knuckleheads going back and forth against each other? Both sides are knuckleheads. Anybody who falls into this vileness is a knucklehead. And I'm a knucklehead because I let myself, not for politics yesterday, but I let myself get out of my, my normal area and, and got this sense of anxiety from the world. And I had a little bit of a snippet towards my sons. And I had to check it back into the Holy Spirit and apologize to the Lord because I sinned. And that's what we have to do every day. We have to tell the Lord, hey, Lord, I fell short of your glory today. I sinned. I got, I got, I got too, too caught up today. I, got, I took it too far. I let them get to me. And I should never let them get to me because you are my King of kings and Lord of hosts. You control my heart. And I'm going to let you control my heart, not this world. We prayed the Bible explosions and divisions it was a blessing to you. And we pray that each and every one of you that takes a double, double look and checks their heart, go back to your, the word of God, check yourself in, make sure you're saved, know that the Christ is the living thing in your heart, the only truth of this world of fake, 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 and deceptions, that the divisions are no longer in your life. You don't care who's divided because you're set apart. If you're set apart, you can't be divided. And you're set apart for his purpose and his glory because it's only matter what he thinks of, of what, you're, what you do that matters. May the God of Abraham, 
Isaac and Jacob. Bless you today and always. God bless you.